Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to today. Oh my. Woo! Get ready. It is so powerful. I was just keeping myself afresh in regards to God's Firewall School, the prophets that I wrote initially in 2011 and then revised it in 2017 in book form. God Spiral School of the Prophet Session 2, A House of Prayer. Y'all, this is the way to end the weekend is all I can say. Woo! Oh my goodness. It is so powerful. I cannot wait to bring to you today's teaching, which is teaching and preaching. God had me come up with that as I would teach the School of the Prophets, and all of a sudden, the fire of God would come on me, and it would turn into preaching, and say, so that's preaching. <laughs> Let me just open the door. I'm already getting hot thinking about this teaching, literally. All I can say is, send this to your friends. Get the book. Oh, my goodness. Hold on one second. Let me open the door. Woo! Saints, good morning, Deborah. <clears throat> God bless y'all. Oh my goodness. I got a text message the other day from Beth, who's now living in Indiana. She used to live in Birmingham and used to come to all of our God's Bible School of Prophets, Healing of the Soul meetings. And she just blessed me. Hey, Andrea, yesterday, last night, I woke up to it this morning because we go to bed early. But Beth said, Robin, I so miss the School of the Prophets and the healing of the soul meetings. Y'all, that was such an amazing time. It's such nostalgia and nostalgic thinking about it because that was really my first few years as a full-time minister. And it was just so, 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 so dear to my heart. And it's funny because in my memories today <clears throat> was when I went to South Carolina, I think it was 2013, that weekend to do the schools. Hey, Virginia, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Yes, Andrea, you know, sister. Oh my goodness. And I hope, I pray to God, I get to do a conference this year at the beach, hopefully in October. I don't know. We'll see. But I miss those too. We used to do two a year, two Watchmen conferences a year where I did workbooks there. But let me just give you some information because people have been watching on YouTube and sending me emails about the God's Firewall School of the Prophets, God's Firewall Healing of the Soul. God had me do those two schools, and the way that he had me explain it was a bridal corset. And when the bride's dress is put on her, underneath is a bridal corset. And on the bridal corset, you have string on the right side and string on the left side to tighten it and to cause the bride to stand up straight. And that was really the visual and the analogy God gave me of God's Firewall School of the Prophets, God's Firewall Healing of the Soul. And generally, as I was doing each one that coincided with each school, they came and they just unpacked the very same message from a different viewpoint from God's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and that's the School of the Prophets and then mankind, the healing of the soul. And so I just have such a passion for those two schools. I've been asked about people getting the whole series of the 36 workbooks. Some want the whole 24 workbooks that I've already completed on the healing of the soul as well. And I'm coming out with them one by one on Amazon, and I will return to writing them next year. <clears throat> After finishing the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease this year, which is the beyond phenomenal book. You do not want to miss that. It is three times better than Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ, if you can only imagine that. And Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ is the prequel to the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Disease. Now, let us get started. God's Bible School of the Prophets, Session 2, A House of Prayer. We've looked at Isaiah 56, six and seven about the prophecy about us that would come into the sheepfold and that we would keep the Sabbath holy and that covenant of God would be manifest in us as we are a house of prayer. 
And so chapter one is about that particular scripture in Isaiah 56, verses six and seven. But we're also going to get to the presence of God in these people and about what this looks like. And I share my own individual testimony about when the fire of God comes on me when I pray. And the first time it ever came on me, I think it was about like 2005, 2004, when I was going to this prayer meeting. And oh my goodness, the testimony that is in this book is uh, absolutely amazing. That's the door that's squeaking because I had to open it because I am so hot from getting excited about this book. And so I'm on page 13 today, and we're going to look at in relation to what happens when you enter this place of prayer and you become a sanctuary, a temple of Holy Spirit. You know, we are, as scripture says, the temple of Holy Spirit. That's what scripture says. Our bodies, Paul the Apostle says it in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And so this Isaiah 56, 6 and 7 represents our members being the temple of Holy Spirit. But we have to be free from this world. Amen. Otherwise, we pray soulish prayers and not righteous prayers. And so today, the emphasis is going to be having clean hands, a pure heart, and having the righteousness of Christ Jesus, being hungry and thirsty for the righteousness of Christ Jesus in prayer, be specific, and that we're filled with that anointing, with that grace, with the presence of God. Amen. And so I'm on page 13, and I'm going to introduce about the holy mountain of God that's in Psalm 24, as well as Isaiah 64. And this mountain of God represents us ascending in prayer. And what it looks like is our spirit man is seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places, because that is really what's going on. I kid you not. When you are just pressing into prayer and understand, just let me preface this. If you're walking in the fivefold gifts of ministry, a lot of people call them offices. That is not what it is in Greek in Ephesians 4. Jesus distributed the fivefold gifts and people call them offices. But you're not going to walk in those gifts in fullness until you first are an intercessor. So what does that mean? that you plow in prayer. Amen. And the reason that you're plowing in prayer is because the word is plowing in your heart. And so we're going to look at Isaiah 64 today. I'm briefly going to mention Psalm 24, and we're going to look at the presence of God coming upon us because it is though we are ascending the holy mountain of God our soul is, our spirit man, and literally, y'all, I kid you not, oh, I just get so excited thinking about it, literally, you are caught up in the spirit, and I remember especially being caught up in the spirit on one occasion, like, you are just so caught up in the spirit, and I get like this when I'm in prayer, praise God, oh, it just, oh, it just gets me so excited, I cannot stop being excited, thank you about it, and so, uh, on one occasion, even, as I was at the church, and it was funny because it was at the church that I was persecuted, okay? On one occasion, they were starting a prayer uh, vigil, and they, uh, one of the humble servants of the Most High God, a true man of God, and his wife, he always saw me praying because I would pray in Sunday school, pray, 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 and I would pray on the pew in the sanctuary, pray, 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 pray. I mean, just pray, 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 pray. That's all I would do. I didn't have leadership position. All I knew is God said, Robin, go in there and pray and pray and keep praying. And so I just said, yes, sir, God, I'm going to pray, 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 pray. And so he had always noticed me being vigilant and consistent in prayer every single Sunday, Wednesday. And so he came to me and he was over the prayer vigil and he said, Robin, I would like to ask you, you and Rich, to be a part of this prayer vigil. Which watch do you want to take? And I said, oh, I want to take the first watch. I want to take the first watch. I am so excited. Oh, y'all, I was like a kid at Christmas, a kid in a candy store, a toy store. I was in all my glory, anticipating, oh my goodness, I get to pray, I get to pray, I get to pray. I cannot wait to pray. And so, as I took the first vigil, Rich was going to read something 
And I said, Rich, you just read it. You just read it as the Lord leads you to read it. And I said, and then, and then, and then I get to pray. <laughs> Y'all, can you tell I'm excited about prayer? Just say that is an understatement, okay? I am very excited about prayer. And so Rich had read this thing, and I didn't know he was all in the prayer meeting. It was the first watch of the prayer, 24-hour prayer vigil. <clears throat> and I came up there after Rich read his thing. I didn't know who was in there. I just closed my eyes, and I entered into this prayer. Oh, my goodness. And this white whirlwind, I kid you not, it came around me. Woo! And I was just taken up in the spirit. Woo! My hand is trembling already. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I just, I just glory thinking about God's presence. It is so powerful. It is so powerful. Praise you, God. Excuse me. <laughs> Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I just feel His presence all over me. <laughs> Oh, God, we praise you, God. We just praise you, God. Oh, we praise you, Father. <laughs> Woo, I don't know if I can get through this. His presence is so powerful. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> and oh, my goodness, I was taken up in the spirit. And I was up in the clouds over the city. And I saw the city. I saw it. <laughs> And the white whirlwind of his presence was around me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I could not see. I could not see in the room. There was just this whiteness and this white whirlwind. It was all around me. And it caught me up in the spirit. <laughs> Woo! And I did not know he was in there. And the leadership of the church was actually in there. And when I had got through praying, I had heard one of the women just interrupt and it kind of pulled me back down <clears throat> and all of a sudden I opened my eyes and I saw that all the pastoral leadership was in the church and the pastor looked at me and he said <clears throat> I want you <laughs> to pray for me <laughs> Woo, y'all you are literally touching heaven you are seated with Christ <laughs> you are seated with Christ <laughs> Woo! Y'all, I don't know if I can get through this. I need God, God's grace. Praise you, God. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Saints, I hope I can get through this. Praise God. Woo! We are on page 13. Help me, Jesus. We're on page 13. And this is about ascending God's holy mountain in prayer. This is literally what's going on, saints. <clears throat> Verse 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2 in the Amplified Classic, Isaiah 64. Man, I'm just shaking. I just cannot stop shaking. Thank you, God. <laughs> Woo, you cannot stop in His presence. Thank you, God. Woo, I'm there, saints. Y'all come up with me. Woo. Verse 1, Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down your holy mountain. <laughs> Woo! That your mountain might quake and flow down at your presence. And when fire kindles the brushwood, and the fire causes the water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. So our focus is going to be verse 1 of Isaiah 64, verse 1, Amplified Classic. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, and that you would come down, that the mountains might quake and flow down at your presence. Woo! Hallelujah. And so here, the word that we're going to look at in Hebrew is presence. And presence is penim. And it means the face before time, beseech, countenance, favor, hallelujah, himself, honorable and showbread. And I cannot help but think about the holy place in the tabernacle 
the place where the sevenfold dimension of Holy Spirit, the menorah, hallelujah, the seven torches of fire, hallelujah, woo, Revelation 4, 5, hallelujah, before the throne of God, woo, hallelujah, are seven torches of fire, and at his throne, hallelujah, are many voices, thunderings, hallelujah, woo, hallelujah, that's where you are, saints of God, woo, thank you, Jesus, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and that you would come down, that the mountains might quake and flow down at your presence. This word presence, penim, is the face before time, beseech, countenance, favor himself, honorable, showbread. And we see this variation in Genesis 32 as Jacob has declared the place where he wrestled with the angel of the Lord, the face of God, penanel. And so this word penyum represents God's presence. The four Hebrew words are pe, yud, noon, and mim. Pe is the mouth. It means to open. It means to speak. It means word. Yud is the arm it works. And it means works make deed. Noon is a fish swimming through water, life and activity. And mim is like a three humped looking m. It's waves. And in the, in the positive, it's massive and flooding. And so the word picture for presence is the word that brings works of life massively flooding forth. Oh my goodness. Saints, John 10, 10, Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. Those that press into prayer with clean hands and a pure heart, you will be just so filled massively with the works of life of God, that it is just going to flow in and upon you, and it is just going to come out of your mouth. You cannot hold it back. Now, we see this justification and sanctification in Psalm 24, verses 3 through 6. Scripture says, Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Y'all, this is the holy place. Woo! Remember, I did the holy place, the altar of incense before the holy of holies. Y'all, chapter one is the holy place. And also in the holy place is the menorah and the showbread. Hallelujah. Presence also indicates showbread. And so it's the holy place. Who shall go up into the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted himself up to falsehood or what is false, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness of God of his salvation. This is the generation, description of those who seek him, who inquire of and for him, of necessity require him, who seek your face, presence, penim, O God of Jacob, do you see Genesis 32, penim, just like you met Jacob God, you showed your face, your glory, your honor, your presence, God, let that be my portion as I come before you with clean hands and a pure heart, hallelujah, and require of necessity, y'all, this is about entering into prayer, verses 3 through 6 in Psalm 24. <clears throat> and so as we look at this, and we look at this as the God of righteousness, bringing that identification of salvation, as mentioned in Psalm 24, we also see righteousness, because righteousness is where the power is. Now get this, saints of God, <clears throat> God has sent me over to nations, and I went not as prophet, teacher, pastor, evangelist, apostle. I went in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I don't give myself a title except for stomp, Isaiah 6, 13. The remnant shall be a stomp. I'm a stomp thing, and when you are a stomp thing, you stomp the devil in prayer, and you're going to see it, and it is powerful. When you battle 
in prayer. It is in one thing and one thing alone. And it is in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And God had me go in uh, Nicaragua 2014. I went by myself. And uh, this elderly man was also in the men's quarter that invited me. We stayed in a compound and it was Jezebel's compound. And I called the apostles, the evangelists that I knew personally that had been there over the last 14 years. And I said, did y'all see anything over here? Did you not pick up on something? In other words, the minister, the woman that I'm staying with that was over all the churches in Nicaragua, where all the churches were giving their ties to that Jezebel spirit. I said, did you not know she was a Jezebel? Not one person saw it. And God gave me dreams. He showed me stuff. And I started praying in tongues. He, she wanted me to prophesy. She invited hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people saying that I'd prophesy over everybody. God said, you're not going to prophesy over one person. And after I didn't prophesy, it made her look foolish. And she wanted to throw me out. God gave me a detailed dream. She wanted to throw me out in the streets with the drug lords. And I told, um, so God woke me up and he said, Robin, your life is at a danger point, you need to get up and pray and intercede. And she manifested on me big time. And I prayed and prayed in tongues. I stayed up. I, I walked. I did. I read the Bible. And I just prayed in tongues all night. And that older American man that invited me, he said, Robin, you want to go have breakfast with him? I said, are you kidding me? Do you know who this is? This is Jezebel. I don't want to even know Jezebel. And he, and I told him everything that God told me. I told him my dream. He thought I was crazy. And then the young boy they adopted, who was now 21 years old, and the American young lady, teenager, 17 years old, whom he was married to, they came to him, put notes under his door. And she also put a note under my door. And he said everything that God told me they wanted to do to him. And God warned me. And I told that man, I said, you get these kids out of this compound. You get them out. He said, Robin, I don't have the money. I said, God didn't say you had the money. God said, the blood is on your hands. Get these kids out. And it was about three years ago that both the mother and the young lady contacted me and said they were going to put her in sex trafficking with the drug people had I not come there and gotten them out. So after I preached, I preached to all the churches in Nicaragua. When I left, Jezebel came down. It was demolished. The stronghold over the nation of Nicaragua broken because I was a stump. I was in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And all the churches that were giving their ties to her stopped, cut her off. And the next year, revival came. And Sherry said on my dear friend, her nephew went over there that next year, worked with that same older white man. And that white man that was 70 years old was building his house onto their house. And I said, and you better get away from these people. Get away. Get your house away. Do not build. Do not work with them. Run. He, he did it. And the next year, Sherry Stedham's nephew went, and he was there, and revival broke out in Nicaragua. And Sherry Stedham's nephew told her, had Robin not come the year before and did what the father told her to do, revival would have never broke out. Saints, your prayer could be what breaks through for revival in your area. But you have to stay humble. You have to know you're nothing and that Christ is everything and that you fade away. And all that matters is the presence of God. Woo! Hallelujah. And so this word righteousness, so you're in the righteousness of Christ Jesus, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those that are hungry and thirsty for what? Righteousness for what? They shall be filled. And so righteousness Isaiah 59, 17, for the Lord put on righteousness as a breastplate or coat of mail. Salvation is a helmet upon his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal and furious divine jealousy. Do you see righteousness 
That is all you need. And how do you do righteousness? How do you enter that space? Psalm 24, 3 through 6, clean hands, pure heart. Amen. And so the Hebrew letters for righteousness are sheen, resh, yud, vav, nun. Five, grace. Sheen, teeth that looks like a W, and the positive consume. Resh, a man's face, head highest person. Yud, an arm at work, works make deed. Vav, a nail, a tent peg to add and secure. Noon, a fish swimming through water. And so the word picture for righteousness, are you ready? The consuming fire of the Most High that brings His works through the nail, adding and securing life. What does that mean? The power of the cross. 1 Corinthians 2, 2, Paul says, I choose to know nothing except for Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Woo, saints. And it's here that we'll go back to Isaiah 56, 7. Remember that as we are a house of prayer, we're going to have joyfulness because that's the presence of God. Verse 7, Isaiah 56, Amplified Classic. All these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings, their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. Their prayers. Woo! For my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Woo! Hallelujah. So joyful here in Hebrew, excuse me, I cannot help it. I'm just, woo, is samach. And it means to brighten, gleesome, glad, joyful, merry, rejoice. And here we look at the three Hebrew letters, sheen, mem, and chet, chet. Sheen, the W, to consume teeth. Then mem, water, massive, flooding. And chet, chet, is a fence or a chamber to separate and secret place. So the word picture for joyful is the consuming fire that floods us in the secret place. Woo! The heart separating us. What? To God's holy mountain. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is where the power of God is made known. And so here, when we look at this, I'm going to end with my testimony. And I'm reading it from pages 19 on to the end of the chapter and just listen to this amazing testimony. And so verse, page 19, the second paragraph, this happens to me all the time, causing me to feel like Jeremiah, where God's word is in me like fire in my bones. When I pray many times, especially in a corporate setting or a prayer group, the trembling of God's word is in my bones. And it's like a fire blazing. I feel the consuming fire of God's word that has separated me unto his covenant. Wherever I pray under the unction, whenever I pray under the unction, I begin to tremble all over from my head to my feet. I will give you an example of such an occasion of God's word consuming me as his house of prayer. In this place, when I'm consumed, I'm actually receiving the answer to the prayer as I pray. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. That is powerful. It is not I praying, but rather the Holy Spirit praying through me. I was at a prayer group on a Tuesday morning where we all came together collectively and held hands. This was the first time for me to pray with this group. And I thought to myself, oh, this is going to be a nice prayer meeting. I had no clue what was about to happen. It always takes me by surprise. As we held hands, we began to go from pastor, from the pastor, starting the prayer off around the circle, letting each person pray what was in their heart. I was next to the last person of about 12 people that morning, and I thought, this is really awesome to have all of us here praying. As I was holding the hand of the young girl next to me, expecting her to go next, she instead squeezed my hand to let me know that she was not praying, and for me to start praying, I thought, Okay, Lord, here I go. At that moment, as I began to open my mouth and my hands began to tremble like crazy, part of me knew I was holding the hand of my friend. Her name was Margaret. 
And the young girl in my mind started saying, this young girl does not know what is going on, Robin, with your trembling. I pushed through the thought I pushed the thought out of my mind and I opened my mouth and it was like this thunderous prayer flowed out massively. I couldn't contain it. At this point, my legs began to tremble along with my hands and I could not hold back what was in my heart to pray. God made his covenant known in my heart while alerting me to the attacks of the enemy in that area. And it was as though I was wearing the coat of mail. The righteousness of Christ Jesus, Isaiah 59. The righteousness of Christ Jesus showed up in the battle. As I continued praying, I began to rejoice and praise God in the midst of prayer. Chiming in throughout the prayer, God was praying through me. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! I was ascending up the holy mountain of God where I stood in my person on earth, having my spirit man lifted up in great strength in the holiness of God to wage war and righteousness. It felt as though God lifted me up and I could almost see myself praying, being an observer of what was going on and giving my whole self over to God's covenant for the revealed word of life to be made known in that area. There has been so much death and sickness in this area that God was showing up to crush the enemy's head. Once my friend standing next to me prayed the final prayer. Afterwards, a man in that group said, I want to pray like that. Woo, hallelujah. I'm telling you, there was a holy fire of God in me praying his prayer to the heavens where I si simply ascended the holy mountain as a participant, watching God pray and being his house of prayer, rejoicing that the answer had already come. The pastor of the church then said, Robin, when you prayed, there was a spirit that tried to find out what was going on. Woo! Now listen to this. Another woman chimed in with the pastor agreeing with him that it had come among the group. It couldn't break the circle we had made, but it was trying to see what was going on. It was here that God spoke to me the scripture about the devil knowing Paul's name, Acts nineteen fifteen. But one evil spirit retorted, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? God showed me that his anointing was on me so powerfully that this devil wanted to know who was praying. That is what happens when we become a house of prayer. The answer to God's pleading for equity is made known first to our heart. It is revealed. As the answer is made known to our heart, we begin to rejoice and celebrate that the answer, as we have merely been a partaker of God's word. Is that not amazing? We rejoice and celebrate that God answered that answer, and we're just a partaker. So this is where we end chapter one, the four components of prayer, God's covenant, the word of God, our tongue expressing God's word, and rejoicing at the revealing of God's promises. Saints, I pray, woo, hallelujah. You were blessed with the day. If you weren't, I was, woo. And I just pray, hallelujah, a hunger and thirst of righteousness for prayer be upon you by the Holy Spirit from the Father as you know the holy place. Revelation 4, 5, at the throne of God are many thunderings and voices, many waters and seven torches of fire. Woo! Hallelujah. And as you know, his presence and ascend in the righteousness of Christ Jesus and God comes in power in the word, manifesting truth in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing